Um, is this working? Can you guys hear me? Glad to see a couple of people here already. Excellent, it's working. I'm, I'm trying to tune into the uh, live stream on my phone so I can get the chat. I'm getting an ad on my own live stream, which is just sad. Okay, uh, I can't see the chat for right now. Uh, okay, now I got it on my phone. So we're good, I think. It's not showing up. Oh, yes, now it's working. Okay, so we got 10 people in the chat so far. Excellent, excellent. Hello, Rory, Recluse, Coaster, Ben, the Fair Player, and that person. Um, Shippensburg, what is in Shippensburg? I'm not really familiar with Shippensburg, but give me a reason to go there and I will consider it. Okay, PowerPoint stream, that is right. We got 11 people here. Uh, I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes. It started a couple minutes late. So we shall hold on till a couple more people get here. Ah, Sammy Marco, glad you can make it. Hello, M Bike TA and DJ Pete's sake. Um, already, we've got some really good creators in this chat. Um, check out DJ Pete's sake's video on the LA Metrolink and Sammy's videos on just everything, if you haven't already. Um, great creators. M Bike TA has a good recap of Pittsburgh's transit, so uh, lots to watch after the stream. Got up to 12 people here. Okay, I'm going to start the uh, sort of PowerPoint content at 8.05. In fact, I'm going to go get a glass of water before I begin because uh, last time I did this a week ago, my throat was like super trashed by the end. So I'm not going to make that mistake again. So I'll be right back. Just, uh, you know, chat amongst yourselves. I am back. Let's check on the chat. Oh, uh, watching the mall video. Um, glad you're enjoying that. That was a very, very spontaneous creation. I got the idea on Monday. I filmed it Tuesday because for some reason I didn't have work. Edited it Wednesday, uploaded it today. So that was a very, very quick turnaround. Uh, oh, hey, Stormy. Welcome, Josh Powell. Um, Toronto Transit Channel. I know that uh, we did make a video together in March and I still haven't uploaded it. And I'm sorry, I'll get to it at some point. I have Ethiopia to finish first, but I will get to it. Um, okay, what else we got? Uh, Joel Freak, welcome. Trains, ferries, and feet. Travel and transit. Oh, that is a good name for a channel. Um, all right, I think we are... Um, <laughs> Walter is great. Good comeback, good comeback. Okay. Well, we are up to 17. Hello, Generic Urbanism Channel. So let's get started. Now, just a huge, huge disclaimer before I launch into my content here. I am still an amateur. So there's many things that I don't know or I don't have tons of experience on. If you watch my videos, you'll probably notice that the sound could be better, the visuals could be better, the angles could be better, the editing could be better. So I am still very much in the learning process, but I have learned a few things. Um, during the two and a half years, I've been making tra travel, transit, train videos. So thought I'd pass them along to you guys. Hopefully they'll, they'll be helpful. If you guys have tips for me, comment below as well. Oh my gosh, Walter, <laughs> do, we, do we need to go there? Maybe just make like an obscure anime reference. So, a bit about me. Classy Whale goes back a lot farther than, um, you know, travel and trains and transit. Originally, it was just a funny little show I put together with my sister where we, we would do skits and 
vlogs and music and adventures. And we did this for a couple years in high school, and then I stopped when I went to undergrad. Uh, but I reused the platform as a travel channel just because I had all the subs already. Uh, the name Classy Whale just comes from a little whale-shaped paperweight we had in our house. But one thing that my high school version of the channel never really had was focus. It was just kind of my platform to put whatever I felt like making that week onto the internet for all to see. So it was really more based around me and less around the content, and it didn't gain a ton of following outside of my online school. So, you know, it, it, it was fun, but it wasn't as focused, I guess. In 2021, I sort of rebirthed Classy Whale into a travel channel where um, my, very, my very first travel video was going to New Haven, Connecticut. And what really inspired me to start Classy Whale was two things. First of all, meeting Miles in transit because I thought it was just so cool that somebody who is as nerdy as I am would be making videos about trains and transit and making it into entertainment. And then the other impetus for starting was getting the Amtrak Rail Pass. So I filmed my whole Rail Pass adventure, and ever since that, I um, was kind of dabbling in different types of videos. I would do vlogs, where it was more of a Miles in Transit style. I would just kind of take my camera, go on an adventure, have some fun. Uh, sometimes I would do more history videos, like the uh, Paradise Station history. Um, very, you know, researched and uh, polished and all kind of done with voiceover. I would do more like trip reports that were a little more formal than vlogs, like my rail pass recap video. And sometimes I would just do videos that were just factual information, like this video kind of explaining the basics of Pittsburgh's west or Pittsburgh's east busway. So Classy Wheel is kind of you know, various types of videos going into the first year of existence. But soon I realized there's something that all of these things have in common, and that is the story. Every video on Classy Whale tells a story with a beginning, a middle, an end, and a point to make. And I think that when we view ourselves as storytellers, as video creators, we will be able to create more polished and better looking, better sounding content that more people will want to watch. Let me check the chat here, see how uh, everyone's doing. <laughs> uh, Travels by T says, I'm surprised you have a whole dang slideshow. Yeah, we are always in the learning process, Stormy. Um, Mass by Train, you should watch the new video. Um, <laughs> the Fair Flare, I literally had a map open of New Haven while watching this, LOL, was looking at pizza places. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Miles has inspired a lot of people. I think it's super cool that he kind of just went with the crazy ideas in his head and sort of inspired a lot of other people to do the same thing, uh, myself and Stormy included. Oh, yes, uh, that person, all, all of the old Classy Will videos are buried under the playlists tab if you ever want to check it out. Um, sample footer text. Yes, I uh, did not remove that. Um, uh, Miles, the Johnny Appleseed of transit YouTubers. I suppose you're right. Although, fun fact, Johnny Appleseed has kind of been sanitized in modern American mythos as this, like, provider of apple trees for apple pies and stuff. No, he wanted people to make booze. Anyways, now that I've ruined your childhood, um, let's talk about how do you tell a story with trains? The first thing you need when you're telling a story is a topic. And you know, there, there's something to be said for making videos about things that are really popular. Like if I made a bit of bleh, if I made a video about Brightline right now, it would probably do very well because everyone is thinking about and talking about Brightline. They just opened a new uh, extension to Orlando, and I'm actually going to go down there in November and do exactly that. But generally, and I'm doing it also because I love bright line and I've never ridden it and I want to check it out but generally this is kind of obvious but make videos about what you like what interests you um, if you are just getting going with videos my tip would be don't plan a major uh, I can talk <laughs> don't plan a major expensive trip just to make videos 
either film a trip you're already going to go on, either by yourself or with your family, film stuff that's in your area. Or if you just want to do like a history or a explainer video, then just get graphics off the internet and make sure you're allowed to use them. I think there's fair use policies for educational videos, but definitely do your research on that. So start small, think about what you want to do. So once you have a topic, then the next angle would be um, thinking about is your topic a general topic or a niche topic? Because whether it's one or the other will kind of depend on, or whether it's one or the other will kind of affect how you're going to market the video, how you're going to display the video and kind of hook the viewer. More about that in a second. If you're doing something more general, like on the left, I have my uh, ride on Denver's RTA. It's a commuter rail system. Most of my viewers like commuter rail, and they know already that Denver has this uniquely electrified commuter rail system that kind of has a bit of a SEPTA vibe, but kind of also a West Coast light rail vibe. So there isn't a whole ton to this concept that isn't familiar to people. But on the right, we have uh, my occupational therapy professor riding her first Pittsburgh bus. That's a little bit more of a niche topic. Most, I'm going to guess most transit enthusiasts only have a basic understanding of what occupational therapy is, or maybe they've only heard of the term once or twice. So that's a little bit more of a niche topic. And with that one, I had to take the first minute of the, of the video just to explain what the heck was going on. So keep in mind that the more general your topic is, the less you're going to have to justify it to the first time viewer. And the more niche it is, if you really like it, then you can justify it. If, if you're really excited about it, you can make a case for why the viewer should watch it. So I want to turn it over to you guys. What topics interest you? What do you like to watch videos about? Or what would you like to make videos about? Should Subway Local be a thing in Pittsburgh? That would be a good video topic. If you, oh, that person says, if you enjoy the subject of your, of your video, the enjoyment should show to the audience and they will turn, they will in turn enjoy it more. <laughs> okay, good, fair, fair point, Walter. Um, Walter says, definitely go, go plan expensive travel if you have the means and disposable income to do so. Seeing the world is one of the best investments you can make for yourself. 100% agree. I just think that if you're going to go on a big trip and you've never made YouTube videos before, go on the trip for yourself. Do something you want to do rather than something that's specifically for videos. Now, make videos about it, definitely. But like, oftentimes, like I, like I planned my whole Morocco trip largely to make Classy Will videos. And I probably wouldn't have done that the year before when I did the Rail Pass adventure because I planned that one more just because I wanted to go on a Rail Pass adventure. Okay, so um, here's some people writing what they want to make videos about. The Fair Player says transit history, the history of rapid transit lines, commuter rail lines, Amtrak routes, etc. Great, we always need more of that. Um, that person says I'd eventually like to make transit content, but currently I just post classical music. I feel like there would be some really creative way to combine those two things. Um, I don't know if that inspires anything, but that's just my immediate thought. Um, Toronto Transit Channel says, um, bleep posts, random travel, most stuff. Good for you. Good for you. Um, I look forward to seeing your bleep posts. Um, what else do we got? Transit-wise, I like seeing adventures in transit, kind of like what you and Miles do. Excellent. Well, we will be delivering more of that. Northeast Regional and Lakeshore Limited. Food and niche transit modes. Okay. That sounds like a channel I would watch. I want to start a series where I go and explore the interesting things along and after the rail line. I'll call it Beyond the Line. Okay, that's really, that's really clever. I think that as long as you tie those things into the train travel, that's going to hook a lot of viewers. Um, inspired by Jeff Marshall's End of the Line. I really, really like that because I, I, I personally really enjoy Jeff's uh, End of the Line series. So an American variation of that would be awesome. Sort of like how people do American variation of least used station. 
Untapped market around the wide variety of rolling stock used in American and European transit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> a video where you do your research. Uh, wow. I'm literally doing my research for my doctorate degree on transit. Um, like that, 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 well, that's what I was doing earlier today. Ooh, activist content. That is always good. A video on Charlotte's freeways. I don't know anything about that. I would love to see that. Uh, you did one on Charlotte's transit system. I think I watched it. If not, I will, I'll make sure I watch it. Uh, transit policy, but loud and obnoxious. Great. <laughs> um, trains with bikes. Loved your trains with bikes video. I would love to see you do like San Diego or something like that next. That would be fun. Um, bike to PRT. I think uh, M Bike TA has already gotten that covered. So Alan Fisher meets Fomer Miles in Transit. Okay, I like that. Um, all the places you can go without using a car. The escalators of the Southern Hemisphere. That is a very niche topic, but okay. You could also do the, the escalators of Wyoming, but you'd run out after like two videos. Ooh, long distance train trips exploring each city's popular food. I would love to do a train trip sometime where like I get DoorDash of like local favorite foods to each station or every few stations just to kind of do a food tour without leaving the train. Okay, I think I am caught up to the chat. I will look back at it soon, but for now, let us soldier on. So, once you have a topic, let's say, for the sake of this illustration, let's look at my New Orleans video I made fairly recently, where I kind of recycled some of my footage from my RailPass adventure and added sort of a new angle to it. The initial angle I, I had when I filmed that was more of a vlog, more of a Miles in Transit style video, where I was simply filming in the moment and then live commenting on the experience. But maybe um, if you or to film something like that, you could do more of a summary or overview, kind of an RM Transit style video where it's like explaining the history and the geography and the infrastructure and all the things that kind of make the transit make sense. You could also do more of an Alan Fisher style, do like an opinion piece that um, maybe addresses the controversies surrounding post-Katrina recovery in New Orleans' uh, streetcars versus buses. Maybe you could do more of a Tom Scott style video and really go into like a very niche aspect of the streetcars. For example, the fact that they have the oldest maintenance of way vehicle of any transit system in the country, or the fact that half their streetcars are replicas of the rest of the streetcars and just how the different models differ. You could do a unique adventure, sort of a subset of the vlog category that would be like doing some themed journey, like trying every po' boy sandwich within a quarter mile of the St. Charles streetcar or something like that. And then the last angle would just be footage. A lot of people just like taking videos of trains going by. And I personally don't watch that kind of video nearly as much as I watch stuff that has more of a structure or a story. But I have a good friend who is obsessed with watching that kind of video. He'll just pull up a bunch of them and watch them back to back to back. And that's really, really fun for him. So there's lots of people who enjoy that. I don't think that the storytelling principles that I'm going for here quite apply to that as much, but they could to a degree, especially if you consider like what order the footage goes in or which clips to include when. Okay, looking at the uh, chat again. How do you have time to watch all this stuff? Double speed. Can you deliver DoorDash using transit? I think people do that. Ordering food delivery to the train is one of the best parts of China's high-speed rail. I did not know you could do that. But they already have, like, onboard food, too. Um, <laughs> in red shirt, I am, I am here in New Orleans. <laughs> I can't do Tom Scott's accent. I am here at this random pool in Lancaster. Oh, that's, that is a deep reference. I really appreciate that. I'd like to do stuff like Jay Foreman, but I'm not nearly funny enough. You know what? Give it a shot. I think you are probably funnier than you think you are. Um, what was the subreddit in your, in your new vid? Oh, good question. That was um, r slash dead malls. 
Riding every PCC in New Orleans, impossible. <laughs> yeah, they had one PCC that they uh, borrowed from SEPTA that took it for a joy ride and then eventually got scrapped. So um, what, I, I guess I'm not going to go into this one right now because we do need to keep going, but um, think about the angles that you enjoy and what kind of angles do you feel the most comfortable making? I guess also I uh, didn't really include this on here, but another entire category could be a trip report. So a summary or overview is more zoomed out. It's like you're at your desk and you're showing people. It's like you're giving a classroom talk. Trip report is a combination of that and a vlog where it's more footage that's in the moment. Like you're actually there, but you're also narrating it from a post being there experience, generally. Apparently a trip reports don't always have those on Miles' channel, but often trip reports have more of a structure and more of a uh, voiceover aspect or like maps and that sort of thing. So then a note about or being original. Sometimes when I'm making videos, I will make a video about something that nobody has ever heard about. For example, as far as I can tell, I am the only English speaking YouTuber on the internet who is like a train guy to make a video about Ethiopia's passenger rail. Every other video I've seen on this site has been from some kind of travel vlogger, like a backpacker or that sort of thing. So I didn't really need to go for a unique angle on Ethiopia's railway. I could just post, this is Ethiopia's railway, because no train guy's ever done that before. But I've found that sometimes when you're covering something that's already familiar to people, it's good to find a unique angle on it. So it's a familiar topic, but it's you know, what I bring to the table and what makes people want to watch my video over, you know, any other video that is being recommended to them, especially if they're searching the topic of like the Mark Camden line. So that's why I really leaned into the, the fact that this very humble and forgettable commuter line was actually the first train to ever travel to Washington, D.C. So um, that kind of gave it a bit more originality because, you know, other people had covered that before in a way that Ethiopian railways hadn't been covered. But that's not a hard and fast rule. Like my Dallas and Cape Flyer videos both did quite well, and they're fairly generic takes on both topics. On the other hand, doing hot dogs of the Northeast Corridor kind of bombed review or uh, view wise. I really enjoyed making these, but people didn't seem to want to watch them as much. And uh, I don't know if that's just because people don't like hot dogs but I think it may have something to do with the fact that it's a little too detached from what people are coming to YouTube to watch as casual viewers. Okay. Um, oh my gosh, someone's singing the uh, apparently a trip report theme song in the chat. Uh, Stormy says, I definitely span across multiple angles on my channel. You may talk about this, but feel free to switch it up now and again. Oh yes, don't, don't feel like you have to always do the same angle for every video. Just think about it when you're making each video. I guess. Okay. Oh, when we edit the Montauk video, we should put a question in the thumbnail of, did we make the 10C? Perhaps, perhaps. I'll think on that. Speaking of which, that's actually a great segue because next we need to talk about hooks. Yeah, you didn't care for the hot dog video. Not, not everybody did, and that's okay. Um, hooks are essentially ideas that grab the viewer's attention. And I always think about three of them when I'm planning my videos. And I've generally noticed that if, you know, all three of them are good, that's going to be indicative of getting more views. First off, the, the first hook is the title. The title needs to kind of thread the needle on a couple of different points. First of all, it should be intriguing. Calling your video, my trip to New Orleans, streetcars, etc., is probably not going to hook nearly as many viewers um, just because it's very generic and it's, you know, there's a million of, other, a million of other things out there that are just like it. It also shouldn't reveal too much about the video. Like if I'm just gonna like say, New Orleans streetcars are slow tourist attractions, not transit. I'm just stating my opinion 
And so people see the title, they're like, okay, they know my opinion. If they really want to know why I feel that, they'll click on the video. But a lot of them are just going to see that and be like, oh, well, he's already made up his mind. That's what he thinks. Now, moving on. Clickbait. Let's talk about clickbait. I feel like there's a fine line to walk with clickbait because on the one hand, it can hook the viewer fairly well. On the other hand, it can also be deceptive and it can be perhaps overdone to the point where you click on it and then the video is kind of disappointing and that will leave a sour taste in the viewer's mouth leaving the video. So saying something like, New Orleans streetcars are messed up is maybe a little bit of an exaggeration. Not to mention if someone from the RTA sees your video, they might not be happy about that. And then lastly, the title should relate to what the video is about. I remember when I uh, did my rail pass vlogs, I was trying to get like the model railroading crowd in on my Phoenix video. So I titled the whole video like, you can ride on this model train in Arizona because there's like a miniature train. And the, that whole segment didn't even begin until two thirds of the way through the video. So I really feel like that was deceptive on my part to um, sort of market the video as being this one thing, whereas that was only a part of the larger storyline. I think there are other YouTubers that do that too, and it's very annoying. So I ended up going with, who are New Orleans streetcars for? Because it poses a question and it says a lot with a little. It says that the video is about New Orleans streetcars. It says that this video is gonna be about the people who design them and who ride them and who need them and kind of leaves an open question as to who those people are and who they aren't. And because it's a question, because it has those little elements, now you're like, okay, so who are they for? And you might be more likely to click on the video. Hook number two is the thumbnail. So I am not a perfect thumbnail designer. I'm always trying to get better at this. And sometimes I just luck out and create a really good one. Sometimes they're kind of junk. But in general, a couple things I've picked up. First off, I always put my face in a thumbnail. Even if I don't appear in the video, even if it's all voiceover, I always put my face there because it adds a human element and adds a bit of a brand to it, adds consistency. Secondly, I almost always leave text, three, four words. This particular one was particularly pr provocative. I'd have people commenting without even watching the video. They'd be like, it's not a tourist trap. I write it every day to work or something like that. Um, and that really, because that's an honest question that one asks when one rides the New Orleans streetcar, because half the time it just feels like an amusement ride, but it's technically run by the city's transit agency and sort of meant as a quasi light rail. Um, so it's relevant, it's short, it's snappy. Next up, I always make sure I include a transit vehicle in the thumbnail. And if possible, I try to show the front. Now this is the back technically, but it looks just like the front. I think there's a power to showing the front, if, it po if at all possible, kind of showing it sort of moving sort of forwards at an angle so you can see the side, but it still feels like it's kind of coming towards the viewer, um, just being as impressive and dominating as can be. Now, sometimes I won't have a good shot of the locomotive, in which case I will use the rear of the train. But I always try to use either the front or the rear. The background, um, my friend Alex Davis has told me the trick to the background is it should be noticeably darker than the foreground. And uh, sometimes people blur it, sometimes people darken it. And what I do is I put like a color filter between the foreground and the background. And then finally, I think the length of the video can actually be a draw for viewers, especially if they're like me who want to sit down and really sink into something. In today's fast paced world where, you know, you could get the same information from a five minute YouTube video and a 60 second Instagram reel, a lot of people are going to go for Instagram. And I think in the wake of that, YouTube has kind of become a haven for videos that are longer that are more like watching a TV channel that's specifically tailor tailored to your niche interests made by amateur creators. So this tells you, hey, this is a quality piece of material. It's gonna really be something you can watch while you eat lunch or while you clean your house. Um, now, not everybody does that. Not everybody likes that kind of video, but that's just speaking from my own perspective. 
if you're wondering how I do my thumbnails, I use Pixlr. It is a free online um, photo editing software where um, they give you a lot of the simpler tools of something like Photoshop, and you get f uh, three downloads of your creations per day. If you pay 75 cents a month, then you get unlimited downloads. So it's, I would say, kind of a bargain. I um, put some of my Patreon money towards that, and it has never failed me yet. And then the final hook is the first 30 seconds of the video. So if you look at, this is the viewer retention graph. Every video um, on an established YouTube channel will put out this graph after about two days of viewership. The gray area shows the average um, viewership at a certain time mark, like what percent of viewers have watched past this timestamp in the video. And then the blue line shows for the particular video. So for the New Orleans video, you can see that 71% of viewers are still watching 30 seconds into the video, which is a little bit higher than uh, some, of the, some of the other videos on Classy Whale that are a similar length. So what's going on in those first 30 seconds? Well, in that time, I talk about New Orleans having a brand, more so than most other US cities. So deeply entrenched is this idea of the ideal New Orleans in American culture that then its transit is going to reflect that. And so that's, that's how I capture the viewer's attention. I talk about that sort of theme of the video that um, is sort of intriguing. And you know, people like New Orleans, people want to know more about New Orleans, and oh, there's streetcars, there's transit, but this transit is unique because it plays into this wider agenda in a very unusual way for a US city. And so with those three, I have now hooked the viewer, and they will hopefully watch the rest of the video, and I will get ad revenue from that. I'm going to pause now and look at your questions. <laughs> okay, wow, okay, I, I missed a lot of chat. There will, be a qu there will not be a quiz at the end, Stormy. Can you solve a Rubik's Cube while going on the fast section of the NEC? I can't, but can you? That would be a good video. Don't make your title a news headline. That is, well, unless you're making a news video, then it totally works. Um, honest and trustworthy clickbait. That is, that is a very good life philosophy. The best clickbait is totally true. Paul Revere's son made the NEC. Okay, now see, I want I want to watch that now. I literally don't know what the heck you're talking about, but I'm very intrigued. Um, never randomly throw something like Mr. Beast doesn't like to ride transit. That's clickbait. Um, you can note take if you want. This will also be posted as a recording. Um, I am not a narcissist. It's easier to identify with people's content when their face is in it. That's that's right. I think so, anyway. Someone told me that last year on um, on Discord, and ever since then I've been putting my face in every thumbnail. Alex Davis does need to post more. You are absolutely right, that person. Photopia, okay. I've never heard of that, but it might be good. Um... Okay, D DJ Pete's sake, I think that was a great... It, it hooked me, for sure. Um, you wrote Charlie on the PRT in my comment section. Yes, I really enjoyed that. Uh, I would love to uh, maybe tweak it a little bit and post it as a YouTube short, if you're okay with that. Um, this feels like online school, but you can roast your teacher. Go get more water. That is a good idea. I'm going to do that, and then we shall continue.
Okay. I am back. What did I miss? I don't know what Riz means. People keep saying this, usually people much younger than myself, and I literally don't know what the heck they're talking about. Toronto Transit Channel says, I want to do a video with Alex where we just complain about something needlessly and it just spirals into madness. I would watch the heck out of that. Okay. Um... Not me going through my videos and changing the titles to... Yes, go through your videos and change the titles. I went through my oldest videos and changed all the thumbnails. If you, if you ever uh, go back through my oldest stuff, you may see some rather newer looking thumbnails. My old ones were done on PowerPoint and it really showed. We should revolt when he gets back. Oh no. Uh, yeah, we're not doing that. Um. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, let us continue. So, now that you have hooked the viewer, the next part is telling a good story. A good story, as you know, has a beginning, middle, and end. But let's break down sort of what that looks like in this particular video. And if you haven't seen it, then uh, I'll just kind of recap it for you. The first part of the video introduces first New Orleans, and then the fact that it has streetcars that kind of contribute to this old timey brand that the city is well known for. Once I've introduced the what, the city, the, the, the streetcars, just the general concept of the video, I haven't gone really into depth on it yet. Then I always like to take a moment and explain the map of what I'm doing. Now, people do maps different ways. Some people will show a completed map. Some people will show kind of an empty map and then one by one show different landmarks. I like to try to build up the map from a blank piece of paper to kind of draw it, almost like drawing it in people's minds so that they begin to, feel, they begin to form a mental image of what I'm talking about. This then adds a layer of where to the why. Then, once I've introduced first the what and then the where, now we've finished the introduction and we're actually going into the meat of the video. And this is when I actually get on the ground and I ride the streetcar. But now you kind of have a sense of where I am and what I'm doing and why, rather than just saying, oh, I'm in New Orleans and I'm going to ride the streetcar. Here we go. Um, and, you know, some people do more of that style and it works for them if they do it right. But I think it's really good to have some kind of grounding because not everybody really knows that much about New Orleans or its streetcars or anything like that. And when I do the ride, I like to I like to do a mix. Just this is just a personal preference of um, sort of in the moment talking to the camera and stuff in voiceover. This is how I kind of include narration about we are now passing this landmark, which has this history. Or if I'm just passing something that's scenic, but not particularly noteworthy or historic, I'll then add some kind of history about the line itself or the equipment and uh, maybe add some graphics. Once I finish the actual sort of vloggy part, the, the act two, if you will, then we get on to, oh, actually, I forgot a piece. This is another personal preference, but I don't believe that trains and transit exist in a vacuum. And I really want to show the places that they connect, because that adds further to this story. And then we have layers. We have the where, we, we have the what, the where, then we have sort of what's it like inside that place, and then what are the places and people that make it matter. So in the New Orleans video, for example, I went to uh, like a jazz club and uh, got to walk around the city and have some beignets and stuff like that. And then we get to the later part of the video. Now that I've set up, you know, what New Orleans is and taking you guys for a tour, I then sit down and I'm like, okay, so what is the takeaway from this? And in this particular video, this video is a little more opinion heavy than some of my other videos where I really went into how I felt that New Orleans was shortchanging locals in favor of tourists in the creation and operation of a slow historic streetcar system. But 
I decided rather than just ending it on criticism, I would pull from uh, more positive examples. For example, the fact that New Orleans is now trying to invest in their um, bus network by building a sort of BRT system. And then I also spoke about Blackpool, a city in England that had a very similar system to New Orleans, but then upgraded to a modern tramway. You can see a modern tram over here in the corner. But because of the parts that came before it, this ending was more meaningful. Because now you know this is what New Orleans is, this is what the current state is. Then the opinion that I'm opining makes sense, because it's about the thing you just saw, and then the solution I'm providing is building on that opinion. So everything flows into each other. Everything is connected to the next thing. There is a definitive flow. What, where, what's it like, what's wrong, what can be done? Or if you simplify it, intro, body, opinion slash conclusion. Everything moves into the next thing. Everything is a on-ramp or a junction or a flyover, whatever uh, transit terminology there is, um, into the next idea. And that's the story. I always try to find a story in whatever I'm doing. Taking a trip, getting on a train in one location, getting off the train in, a, in another location, that by itself could be a story. Or um, going to a city and riding every line of the metro, that could be a story right there. Um, transit, I think, lends itself very naturally to storytelling, just because of the definitive nature of, of there's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. You get on the bus, you ride the bus, you get off the bus. Okay, pause to look at the at the chat. <laughs> What the heck is going on in this chat? <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to uh, just uh, keep going. <laughs> so, like I was saying, always try to find the story. Questions are very important to the stories you're telling. For example, looking at this, uh, these different thumbnails, just from the title and the thumbnail, there's questions that are posed that are going to be answered, or I guess also in the beginning of the video. Questions are posed that are then going to be answered as the story flows from the beginning to the middle to the end. Um, for different videos, there's different types of questions, different levels of questions, but always think about what questions are you planting in your viewers' minds. You're kind of messing with their minds a little bit by um, sort of making them generate these questions or giving them these questions that then the story is going to answer. Hello, Rice. No, this is not Miles of Transit. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, you posted your thumbnail concept in the Discord. I will uh, take a look at that. Um, do a series with Miles and tons of other transit YouTubers about traveling from Bar Harbor to San Diego without, without flying or using a car. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty easy. Just bus, train. And once you get, once you get to Boston, it's just Lakeshore Limited, Southwest Chief, Surfliner. But it could be good. Uh, can I share the slideshow? That is a, a really good idea. Show us my, I'm actually at my school, so I can't show you my crap. Okay. I'm actually going to give you homework. I lied. What questions do these thumbnails make you ask? I am thinking about doing that. That is actually something I want to, uh, I want to do at some point. Lan Lancaster to Lancaster, but uh, probably not for a while because I don't have a whole ton of free time at the moment. So. AUTA is a thing I get comments about. I got two good ideas on that one, and then I ran out of ideas. So unless I have a really good idea, I don't think there's going to be any more ATA, unfortunately. Really, the fake London train is the longest. That, that's a good question right there. Why? That's a good question. <laughs> um, why the heck is it so long? That is an actual question. How long is North America's, exactly, how long is it? Um, what happened to Montauk? That is not a question that these uh, slides are posing, but that's a good question. How on earth is it four hours long? How long was it? Why is there London in Canada? 
Okay, we got some good examples. Okay, moving on. A few extra tips. Don't assume that people know what you're talking about. Always explain to people as if they probably know a little bit, but probably don't know very much. That's my advice anyway. Some people can be very technical and it gets annoying, and some people can be very not technical and it gets annoying. So find your balance, but I would recommend trying to make sure it's at least decently approachable. And then if you revisit an idea or a topic several times in a video, spread out information. You don't want to info dump near the beginning of the video, or people are going to be overwhelmed and they might not want to stay for the rest of the video. For example, I was working on a video that I'm going to put out next week about the Cuyahoga Valley Scenic Railroad, and when I was doing the map segment, I was originally going to explain why the northern section of the railroad is abandoned when I mentioned that it is abandoned on the map, but then I realized I have the whole video to do that, so I'm going to put the explanation later in the story and not distract from the map segment. So once you have your story, once you have your angle and your sort of mental image of where the story is going to go, once you have your topic, then you need to film it. I don't have that many recommendations on gear. I got my camera as a Christmas present 12 years ago. I can't even tell you what model it is, but it takes good video and it has good audio. So I use it for everything. I use it for my voiceover. I use it for my visuals. Um, the, uh, the camera in my left hand in this picture was uh, sold to me by one of my subscribers as a backup and I don't use it a ton, but it's been helpful. Badger uh, Toronto Transit Channel in the comments. He knows way more about gear than I do. Okay, taking a look at... Um... <laughs> Hello and welcome to Classy Whale. This is a live stream about video production with slides. Oh my goodness, Rice. Um... No, we did not stop lying, lol. <laughs> Why does Caleb look like he's gonna kill us? Oh no. Okay. Um, I still you. Oh yes, most most people these days. I forgot. I was gonna mention that phones have really good cameras and decently good mics. So if you're just gonna dabble in this, if you're not sure if you're serious or not, just film with your phone. You don't need a nice camera. Your phone will probably take great video and nobody's like, they film jet lag on phones, I believe. So, and, and I know uh, some friends of ours, such as uh, Stormy Kara, um, film all of their stuff on their phones. Oh yes, read somewhere that the best camera is the one that you have. Oh, ans answer the call. <laughs> um, no, I'm not going to do that at the moment. Okay, let's talk about filming in public. Number one, be respectful. Filming can make people uncomfortable. Try not to film directly people. Try to get like broad, maybe broad shots of crowds, but try to make sure as much as possible that you are not taking any close-ups of operators or your fellow passengers. And be mindful of what photography policies are. Some places don't allow it. Um, a lot of places do, at least for private use. Keep in mind that some drivers or operators may not be happy about cameras, even if the policy states that you are allowed to have them. Um, but if you are filming a heritage operation, such as the cable cars in San Francisco, they're probably not gonna make a stink at all because they're used to it. They're, they're meant to be photographed. Do not trespass when you're filming. Just blanket rule, trespassing is against the law, don't do it. Also, if you're going to over like record conversations you overhear or announcements from operators or your conversation with an operator, check state laws because some states that is actually not legal to record without the consent of everybody involved. If you do record a good soundbite, try to ask whoever is in the soundbite if you can include it in the video. Um, moving on to just tactics, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm not the the best at saying, okay, this kind of angle is better than this kind of angle, I will say, um, you know, keep in mind what you're going to use the footage for. I tend to shoot a lot of out the window stuff, and one of my bad habits is not getting very good trackside or roadside footage. So then when I, when I need to show the external aspect of a transit system, which is the most visually appealing, 
I only have like two or three clips that I have to play over and over again. So try to get some good track side stuff if you can. That's also good for thumbnails. Um, with window shots, sometimes windows can reflect and they can reflect your fellow passengers. So be careful about that. Sometimes they're very dirty. One time I was on an Amtrak train and a gentleman actually had like a black cloth that he would suction cup to the window and it would go over his camera and that would prevent the reflection. So if that's something you're worried about, maybe that's something you could try. If you feel self-conscious about filming in public, wear something nicer than you normally do. Generally, dressing up fills people with a little more confidence and it makes them look a little more professional. It makes you look more like a journalist because that's what you are being when you're making an informative video about public transportation. I don't personally do this, but I heard this as a tip that um, sometimes people will take you more seriously if you do that. So keep that in mind. If you are going to talk to your camera in public, prepare ahead of time what you're going to say. Think about it. Really have the words in your head. People are probably not going to want to watch somebody who's holding the camera and kind of uh, thinking about uh, what I'm going to say. Uh, we're going to ride a train or something like that. They're going to want to see someone who is a little bit more polished in their delivery. If you are a little uncertain about that, practice in front of a mirror, practice with your camera, do like a parody vlog where you like vlog walking around your house or something, or maybe just think about doing voiceover. Generally, rough delivery is not going to hook viewers as much. Also, this is something that I have gotten better at. Speak clearly. Um, sometimes people, I, I, I'm still guilty of this, sometimes people can stumble over their words and it can really throw viewers off. I found that the more time I spent working in a public school, the clearer my delivery on Classy Wheel became to the point where about six months into working for the channel, people were complaining at, that I over-enunciated everything. But that is deliberate. I want people to be able to understand me. Transit is also loud. So if uh, you really want to talk to yourself on transit, try to invest in a good caller mic. I bought one. It was not very good. And so now I mostly just do voiceover for any time I'm riding transit. Okay. Pause. I'm going to uh, look at the chat here. Okay, yes, you can get an external mic for your phone. That's how I've always used it. Um, path does not allow filming. That's common knowledge in real fan circles, but I'm telling you now, if you don't know that, you cannot film on path. Do people film on path? Have I filmed on path? Open question. Um, oh yeah, iPhone 12 mini is perfect. Be careful with copyrighted music playing in the background. I've found that hasn't been an issue for me so far, but for some people it is. Um, yes, a lapel mic can really upgrade your phone videos. Always be respectful. Don't do illegal stuff. Always thank the bus driver. Um, Mr. Whale, I'm going to get food. Okay. Oh, here's a hall pass. Brightline has dots. I, if, if my train to Miami next month has dots, I will cancel it and I will get on the next train. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> downtown live stream. Okay, first of all, it's Center City, not downtown Philly. But someone was live streaming raiding stores. That is uh, wrong. Oh, there's a teleprompter app. I've tr Okay, I've tried that and it actually did not work because you could see my eyes kind of darting away from the camera to read off of a script and I wasn't delivering as naturally. So it felt very forced and um, I don't like how that came across, but maybe you can practice with that and get better at it. Oh yes, <laughs> don't be that person who is awkwardly recording a hundred takes of a clip in public. I have been that person and I don't like being that person. So don't be that person. <laughs> Um, it's not against the rules unless you get caught. No, Walter, that's, that's not true. That is not true. Don't listen to this man. <laughs> um, okay, moving on. Any questions before we go to the cutting room? Actually, I will continue to talk because I was just reading the chat and I will catch up on your questions. Oh, yes, we have another sample footer text over here. So from here on, I'm not going to go into as much detail. I feel like it, you can't 
just explain how to edit. You got to do it and you got to learn by doing because everyone has their own ways of doing it. But this is kind of my process. Once I have my story, once I have my footage, I will then upload all the footage into iMovie. I'll drag it into the timeline, like the actual place where the editing happens. Rather than creating like an event, I'll just put everything in the timeline itself. Make sure everything is in chronological order. If uh, there's stuff on my camera and stuff on my phone, I have to synchronize it. Then once I have the timeline in order, I will then write the script. This allows me to reference the video for the script so I know what things to put in what order, what things to make sure I mention, and um, just sort of already start planning on what footage will go with what lines. When it comes to writing, there's all sorts of good tips on good writing on the internet, and they definitely apply to writing YouTube scripts. Generally, the least words possible to say something. Um, using the least, use, use the least words possible to say something. I used too many or too few words to say that. The less words you use, the less time you take, and the less the viewer feels like you're wasting their time. If you're going to go on a tangent, really justify it. Make it really interesting or make it really relevant. But people, especially in this genre, really love random trivia. So pile that on, sprinkle it throughout, as long as it's relevant to the story. Most viewers are gonna have, like I said earlier, most viewers are gonna have some background knowledge, but don't un assume that they know too much. Explain stuff that isn't just abundantly well-known or clear. Like you don't need to explain what Amtrak is, but you might need to explain um, you know, where the capital limited goes, for example. And then get feedback. People like uh, Walter in the chat here and my friend Alex Davis have been wonderful in critiquing the scripts of some of my bigger videos. Once you have a good script, then the next step is voiceover. I haven't quite mastered this, to be honest. Uh, I only started being really a voiceover guy full time about six months ago. But I would say, in general, try to record in a quiet, non-echoey space, like a car or closet. You'll notice in some of my videos my voice echoes a lot because my apartment has hardwood floors, and uh, my best audio usually has come from either sitting under a blanket or recording in my car, which is generally my preferred location. Make sure you're speaking clearly, slowly, and steadily. These are people who maybe have never heard your voice before who are going to come watch this video. So they're not going to be used to your um, shorthands or patterns of speech as, as clearly and as slowly as you can real realistically make it without making it exaggerated, obviously, is good. Um, just pretend, even though you're recording by yourself, pretend you're projecting to an audience. Imagine the people who are going to be watching this. Excuse me. Have some water ready. That's what I'm doing tonight. Don't eat anything that's like chocolate or dairy or cheese for the, the few hours before you record the, vid the audio. If you do, it's not the end of the world, but often that can affect how smoothly you feel when you're delivering. Like I just ate ice cream before I did this stream and I'm, I'm feeling it. But even though you're projecting confidence, you're probably going to make mistakes. I always stumble over stuff when I'm recording voiceover. Don't worry, just start back at the beginning of the sentence and keep plowing ahead you will have time to edit this later. In fact, I recommend taking the, uh, taking the voiceover and putting it into GarageBand and cutting it together before you even put it in the video, just to save you one less step in the video editing software. Editing tips. Really just learn by doing. A couple random things I've, I've learned. Generally, 1.5 to 2.5 seconds is a good duration for a clip and a montage, but um, if there's something really special, you know, maybe give it a little more time. Make sure that what you're seeing and what you're hearing as a viewer is connected. So like if you're talking about the San Diego trolley, for example, show a clip of the San Diego trolley if you have one, or a picture if you can get it off of Wikipedia Commons or something. If you need a chart or a graphic, don't be afraid to make that in PowerPoint and put that in. That adds, that shows that you're really being careful about visually expressing something and uh, you really want to make sure you get your point across in a very accessible way. That will make more people want to watch. You know, make, make your video, sleep on it, go back the next day and see if you still like it. 
um, it's always good whenever you're doing any kind of creative work to see it with fresh eyes. Music is great. If uh, you go to the YouTube studio, there is usually a library of royalty-free music that you can use, but make sure that it doesn't drown out the other sound. On iMovie, I usually put music down to about 5% of whatever the volume is of the voiceover, and that gives it enough volume to be atmospheric, but not enough to drown out said voiceover. Generally, I do end up using footage multiple times in a video. People notice once you start using a clip more than maybe twice. So try not to use it more than that. And then just like with the writing, get feedback on your editing. My battery is at 10%, so I'm gonna plug it in. And uh, one thing that my music composition teacher said in high school that really stuck with me was the eraser is the most important part of the pencil. Because sometimes when we make a creative thing. We just get so into it that we make a ton of that thing. And people oftentimes don't want to just see the raw exports of our brain. They want to see a polished story. Like I said, it's the intro, body, opinion, conclusion. Does what you include help or hurt the flow of the overall story? So think about that. If there's something you're not sure about, try removing it and seeing if it works better or if it works worse, if, um, you know, maybe you need a couple minutes less of footage or, or something like that. It's really up to you, but something to experiment with. Once you have the video edited, the next things that you need to do are uploading. First of all, write a good description. I usually make mine pretty short. The description isn't as key as the title or the thumbnail or the first 30 seconds, but, you know, make it nice. Generally, chapters make the video look more polished. You can just, to do chapters, you just put the timestamp of each chapter in the description, and then next to the chapter, or next to the timestamp, type what the chapter is called. It's a fairly unintuitive system, but look it up. It's actually fairly simple once you get used to it. Tags, you can add tags to each video, and this will help the algorithm recommend your content to viewers. Info, once you have, like, more than two videos, info cards and end screens are your friends. Um, pepper your video with them, make sure people who click on your first video are going to know that you have other videos. And then don't be afraid to advertise your content if you feel good about it. Show it off on my Discord. I have a whole channel called Self Promotion where you can post your videos freely. Um, post them in special interest Facebook groups or Reddit groups if they allow self promotion. Always check because some don't. Let's talk about money. So um, to enable ad revenue for your channel, you need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours in the last year. But Patreon can be started anytime. However, I would not recommend starting it right away. Make a few videos first and really give people a reason to want to support you. And uh, always, I, one thing I learned was that Surprise, surprise, a lot more people would join my Patreon when I started offering Patreon-exclusive bonuses. Most people don't join Patreon just out of the goodness of their hearts. They want something in return. So I have started offering, when I can, early access to videos for anybody on my Patreon. Make sure, even if you're a small-scale YouTuber who doesn't get money to begin with, to never include copyrighted music. Consider your videos a future investment. I have so many videos where I used copyrighted music because you know, it's, it's, not, it's not illegal. YouTube has an agreement with the record companies, but that agreement says that any revenue from the video goes to the record companies if I use copyrighted music, and I don't get those dollars. At, at the time I used them, I didn't really think I was ever gonna make money off of YouTube. And then some of these videos really, really exploded. Like, of my top 10 videos, I think six or seven have copyrighted music and I've never made money off of them. So don't do what I did. Overall, I make about $300 a month off of Classy Wheel at its current state and size between Patreon and ad revenue. I consider it kind of like running a small business, so the, the decisions I make are based both around what I want to make and what I think would make the most money. And my goal is eventually to have enough income from Classy Wheel that I can pay for all of my travels and stuff, and I don't need to, because you know I don't have a lot of money as a grad student, so I'd like to be able to have an income that pays for my hobby that then generates more income. It's, you know, it's a dream, but people have done it. 
So that is all I had for myself. Um, I'm gonna go back through the chat and catch up on what people have said, and then um, send me your your concepts, your videos, your just anything that you're either created or you're thinking of creating, and I'll take a look. I'll be around for about, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna sign off at 9.45 at the latest, but um, we shall see. Okay, let's go back through the chat here. Okay, tunnel vision. Tunnel vision is absolutely trespassing. It is a violation of so many things. I really, I, I kind of had a, uh, a little bit of a beef with that guy on Twitter. <laughs> I was not a fan. Uh, the footage looked good, but I just it just made me uncomfortable to see this guy literally adhesiving an object to the outside of a passenger train. Like, who does that and think that's thinks that's okay? Uh, oh, yes, get a friend to help as a cameraman. That always helps. Ooh, uh, the fair player says, I appreciate the enunciated delivery from an accessibility perspective. Yes, if you are hard of hearing, enunciated, slow, clear delivery can help uh, also if um, you're using a uh, speech-to-text software for your captions and stuff. Oh, yes, Avery says, random trivia is my middle name. Oh, yes, that person says, for my own compositions, I've stuffed like 20 ideas into one piece, and it just results in a disorganized mess. A lot less can be a lot more. Absolutely right. Um, putting keywords in a description are pretty effective. Um, I usually rely more on tags than on descriptions, but I think some people rely more on descriptions. A YouTuber's biggest asset is their backlog. Yes, I took a hiatus this summer for my Ethiopia trip, and I was still generating revenue from a lot of my videos. Where do I want the videos and concepts sent? Send them in the comments, or to my email, or on my Discord. Uh, all that information is either on my about page or the description of this video. Um, Tunnel vision is a rest censored. Agreed. Okay, so M Bike TA says my my main future videos will be an Amtrak trip from Pittsburgh to Boston, three parts, Capital Limited to Washington D.C. and a Sela, and taking the LRTA mall bus to New Hampshire on Black Friday. Okay, um, that sounds like a good set of videos. Um, have you thought about? what you're going to use as like what what's going to be the story there i guess editing software uh, editing software suggestions honestly iMovie is what i use it comes standard with Macs. i do not have a good suggestion for windows but there's all sorts of information out there um Stormy, your videos are amazing. You have much better... Mo I, I use PowerPoint for my motion graphics. You use actual motion graphics software, and it looks amazing. So don't say that about your channel. Uh, would I visit Japan if someone paid me? Um, if When I can't afford to go to Japan, I will consider going to Japan. My dream is to do a video where I speed run the entire Shinkansen network as fast as possible. Okay, DaVinci Resolve is what some people are using. Okay, I've been hearing some Discord pings uh, throughout the stream, so people are probably sending me stuff or at least badgering me. Okay, someone on Discord is <laughs> explaining what Riz is. Um, I still don't understand it, but okay. Um, Okay, um, TunnelTrain96 sent me a thumbnail for the video that they're making. Let's 
find it. Off topic. Okay, so this is um, wait, is, is it still showing? Because it switched desktops here. Yes, you can see it. Okay. So what was the cult trolley? I really like this. It's well framed. It kind of follows the rule of thirds. And I really appreciate this sort of fade going from the, the side to the, the trolley itself. I will say, keep in mind that whatever you post, about this much of it is going to be blocked by the timestamp of the video. And I think the timestamp might cover definitely this headlight and possibly a good bit of this headlight as well. So consider possibly moving the trolley's position so that it's clearly out of the way of the black box that's gonna, gonna go down here. Also, um, I like the color of the text and the background. I think maybe adding a little bit of shadow under the text or some outline could sort of set it apart from just being sort of a PowerPoint look and looking a little bit more like pew, sort of popping out at the viewer. Um, yeah, other than that, I think it's quite good. Let's go back to where was my PowerPoint. OK. Back to Discord. Let's check here. OK, well, Walter is just sending me random things on Discord. <laughs> OK, DaVinci Resolve is free and very comprehensive on Windows and Mac. You can also do all the audio stuff in-house rather than in GarageBand. Joel Freak, uh, yes, some of us have miles. I do not have miles. If you would like to give me miles, that would be much appreciated, but no pressure because if you have miles, use the miles. Go see the world. I'm jealous. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm waiting for the day that you film my Japanese and I give you subtitles that are completely wrong. Let's do it. Um, number one pro and con of living in Pittsburgh. Number one pro, it's a really cool city. Con, it's far from everything. Riz is slang for charisma. Oh. Okay. Give the trolley laser. Oh, yeah, yes. Okay, give the trolley laser eyes. Um, okay. Does anyone else have a uh, project that they're thinking about or a project that they're working on that you'd like me to take a look at? Okay, someone sent me something on email. Let me take a look here. Okay, someone, uh, Johnny, sent me a collection of, oh, this is a spoiler for um, the giant project that's coming up. You weren't supposed to see that. Um, let's go here. Turn off screen capture for a second so I don't show you anything that you're not supposed to see. Oh, Walter is working on part two of um, the Metrolink video. That's cool. St. Louis Metrolink is for some reason, it's like the boon of YouTubers. Like I've gotten so many views on my Metrolink video with Rice. It's one of my most viewed videos from this year. Perhaps I think second only to um, Cleveland Healthline and of course, What If Amtrak Never Existed. Okay. Let's open these up and then I'll turn the screen recorder back on. Okay, so these are uh, Johnny's thumbnails 
for his real fanning videos. And right off the bat, I gotta say, I love the consistency. We got the, uh, the color trim around it, which sort of makes it pop. I've never really done like a color frame, but I know uh, other YouTubers who have done that and it's worked for them. Maybe I'll have to start trying that. But it also matches the train, which I think is cool. Um, this is a good angle. It's got sort of rule of thirds, like you got the uh, train roughly on the left third and the cross buck in the, uh, in the middle and then, or crossing gate or whatever it's called. And the van over here on the right. Uh, the one thing I would say is that um, the text doesn't pop out enough from the thumbnail. I would recommend using like more of an outline, maybe some shadow, like put this into Pixlr and uh, see what you can mess around with with text, with making the text sort of seem like it's floating above the picture rather than part of it. Also, if you really want to experience with, if you really want to experiment with color grading, consider like lightening or saturating the train and darkening or desaturating or even blurring some of the background just to make the train pop a little bit more. Not crucial. And also I think, keep in mind, this is going to be very, very small when people see it. And they can definitely identify that this is a commuter rail train. But if you look at the uh, Cape Flyer thumbnail, on this one, the train is very big and very prominent. And on your other one, the, uh, oh, where'd it go? The train is a little bit more in the background, but it does kind of work. I do like it. So not a hard and fast thing. Also keep in mind your logo is very small. And if you have the timestamp bracket here, it's going to cover the logo. You're not going to see it. So I'd recommend putting the logo here and making it about this big. So it's going to really pop and people are going to notice it. Um, like I said, really like this one. Um, maybe play with some color grading or, or lighting or darkening on the different elements to make the train pop a little bit more. And again, same thing with the text. Just really make sure things kind of jump out at the viewer. And there, there's people who are more experienced at this than I am. In this case, I would say the same thing, like add some outline to the text, add some shadow, maybe make the text a little bigger. Um, overall, again, I really, really love your layout of having the frame, having the well-framed um, screenshot. The consistency of the logo is great. I know Miles does that, and it really works for his thumbnails. I don't really have a thumbnail logo on my videos, but other people do it, and um, I think it looks good. Here's another one. Oh, okay, I like this one. It's really got this sort of motion feel to it, like, oh, this train is kind of swinging around. It's about to come blasting through the station. Um, no, no, like major notes on this one. And here's the last one. Ooh, okay. You used the mass dot engine. I like it. Again, very well framed with the train and the bushes and stuff like that. Um, I think on this one, maybe try darkening the bushes a little bit to make the text a little more um, noticeable. And the, once again, you have the space for a bigger logo here. There's just tracks. There's not much going on visually here. So I think you could put the logo here and just make it bigger, like I was saying. Well, thank you for, thank you for sharing that. Um, let me see what else people have sent. Oh, you, you also sent me a, a video. I almost forgot that. So it looks like you mostly have rail fanning footage here. Ooh, okay, I like that, where you have the, the logo and then the title. It's a good little intro. I'm not gonna have the best feedback on this because this isn't usually the kind of thing I watch quite as much, but got some nice long shots. And really anybody who just wants to see kind of what it's like day in the life on the platform, unedited, is gonna love this. It's, uh, ooh, I love how you keep timing it where it's like the two trains at the same time. Um, although it's breakdown aftermath. So that's pretty cool. Did you describe what the breakdown was? Okay, here we go. After MBTX 1050 broke down. Da -da 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 -da. So you have a whole description here in the, in the text that kind of um, describes what's going on in the scene. I think that's cool. I would encourage you 
maybe, and this is maybe just a personal preference thing, and everybody does these differently. So this is not a strong suggestion. This is just what I would do in your situation. Include more of the explanation in the video itself. Like, okay, what are we looking at? What's going on? Whether that's text or voiceover, I think that um, even if most of the footage is still just train sounds with no commentary or cuts or anything like that, a little bit of in-video description would be cool rather than having it down here. But I also respect what you did here. That's, again, not a strong suggestion. That's kind of just how I would have sort of told this story. But then, then again, that, that is a story, like I was saying. You know, like, you're telling a story with real fan footage, which is cool. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that. Let's see if anyone else is... Uh... Okay, uh, Rice, do, do we need to give everything uh, laser eyes? <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Okay, Pinup James says, very early in the planning stages of a documentary about the mall you just went to. The Mills was my favorite mall company, but did way too much way too fast. Um... Okay, video idea. Taking Bart to Costco, buying 200 pounds of stuff. And, yes, please do this. Um, oh, okay, my M bike TA says make the frames thickness consistent. I think that's good. Wow, <laughs> Sammy, Sammy Marco with the roast. Um, RIP, you need friends for that. Also, I just realized I'm live streaming my streaming software, so I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint here. Yeah, Stormy says, I use a color trim on my videos depending on what type of video it is. Transit trip, transit tourist, rail fanning, bus battle, etc. <clears throat> yes, Walter, I'm still surprised you managed to carry 200 pounds of stuff back from Japan. <laughs> Oh, Toronto Transit Channel says, uh, Caleb, close some tabs. Oh, you think I have tabs? I have a friend who will have like 30 tabs open at once, and most of them are YouTube videos of the Tokyo subway. Um, because he likes having them handy. Um... New. Okay, I disagree with Stormy. I like the railroad crossing ding. Stormy also suggests cutting out some of the dead air stuff, like waiting for the train to come. I, I guess. I think the whole vibe of that kind of footage is just like, okay, this is raw footage. So scroll around and enjoy it however you want. But, um, you know, maybe that's a good suggestion. <laughs> it's more the singular ding instead of a consistent ding, ding, ding. Oh, you should hear some of the crossing gates on the Pittsburgh light rail. It's like ding, 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 ding. It's really strange. Uh, you're welcome. I'm glad I could give you some feedback. Oh, the hungry fan, the hungry transit fan says, just emailed you one. Forgive my awful voice. Your voice is not awful. Nobody's voice is awful. Voices are a beautiful thing. Um, Okay, say something on Discord. Uh, Stormy also sent me something on Discord. Okay. Um, I will... I think that's everything. Um, oh, Jim Brooks sent me a video. And Andrew sent me a video as well. Okay. So. Um... Sorry if I just revealed someone's last name. Uh, let me get myself organized here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to um, take a look at um, Andrew, the Hungry Transit fan, Stormy, and Sammy have sent me stuff. 
And then I'm probably going to call it a night with that. But I will also sing uh, Rory's Charlie on the PRT song as a finale. So first off, let me call up all of the media that we need. Um, could someone please share a fun fact in the chat while I am calling everything up, just to keep things exciting? Your supply chain has no weak links. We're the only large asset based. Ever since the events of the early 2020s. Stormy. Okay, so I'm looking at the videos y'all are sending me, and um, a lot of them are at least 10 minutes long, so if we watched all of them end-to-end, -end, we would be here till quite late. So um, I think I am going to just watch the beginnings of each one to offer some thoughts, the first like two or three minutes. Um, but, uh... I will make sure I spend enough time on each thing that um, I get a good sense of what it is. Now, um, Sammy, are you okay with me showing the script that you sent me on the on the stream, or would you prefer I just read it? Let me know in the chat. Um, in the meantime, turning the screen recorder back on here and the chat as well. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Assume that's a yes. So, first off, we have speed running the speed lines. DRPA slash SEPTA NHSL. So right off the bat, I'm going to say don't include this in the title. A lot of people don't know what the initials are. The people who do know what the initials are, probably don't need to see them there because they already know what you're talking about when you say the speed lines. I will suggest possibly changing the title to Speed Running Philadelphia Speed Lines to give a little bit more of a sense of direction and place um, in terms of hooking the viewer um, and then maybe put more of this stuff in the description or the tags. So without further ado, didn't have time to film an intro because I'm definitely running on time, but today I am speed running the speed lines. Okay, I love the fact that you have a jingle and like an intro and a logo. Just all of that makes me happy. And here's the start. Oh no. Am I frozen? Go back to live. Can I see myself? We can't see the video. Oh no. Oh, I'm good now? Okay. Um. Okay, tell me when you can see speed running the speed lines on.
Anybody, anybody. Can you see the title of the video? Nobody is responding in the chat. This is not good. Okay, I don't know what's going on. I think if uh, we're having some problems here, uh, we should probably wrap up for tonight, but I will individually send feedback to everybody who sent me stuff. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for supporting Classy Whale. Um, I wouldn't be able to get as far as I am without you guys. So have a great rest of your night. Keep making videos. I hope this has inspired you and take care.